So welcome to Technodad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And uh, in today's episode, what we're going to be doing is installing Open Media Vault to one disk. And it's not a hard process. It just takes a little while, because first thing we have to do is install Debian. And then once Debian is installed, we're going to be installing Open Media Vault on top of that. And if you like this video today, make sure you like, and if you haven't already subscribed to get more updates from the channel, and here we go now. And a special thanks to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do, first thing is to download the Debian image. And so go to debian.org distributions, download an installation image. And then we're gonna do this for AMD 64. So we're gonna click on that and that will download. The next thing we wanna do is download Bella Anna Etcher and this will burn our image to our USB drive. And so the first thing we're going to do is open up Bella Anna Etcher, click Select Image, find the Debian 10 uh, net install that you downloaded, insert your USB drive, and then click Flash, and then that will write that to disk. And Bella Anna Etcher automatically ejects that. So once that's done, just pull that out. And then once that's pulled out, and we're going to need one other thing here. And so we're going to go to GitHub to the Open Media Vault plugin developers install script. And I will leave a link to this down below. And we're going to do two things once Debbie is, in, is installed. So from our terminal, we're going to type in apt-get install wget sudo. And then once it installs wget, then we can download the script and execute it. And we can do this two ways. We can type this directly into our terminal attached to our server, or we can use PuTTY to uh, copy and paste this into a terminal window. Once you start up your computer, you'll get to this screen. And so we're going to do graphical install. So hit enter. Next, pick your language and then hit enter to continue your country keyboard and then change your computer to whatever you want it to be called and hit continue and continue now put in a password write this down this is your root password and then create a new user and you can just put in your name and enter and then put in a password for your new user and then hit enter and your time zone and so we just have one disk, so we're going to use our entire disk and hit continue. And how we're going to do this is we're going to go to separate home partition then hit continue. And then here you can see our primary where our open media vault is going to be installed is going to be 16 gigs. And then our partition, which is where we're going to have everything else is going to be 30 gigs and then hit continue. And then you have to tab down to yes and then hit enter. And then that will format that disk and then install. And no, we don't want to insert another CD. So we're going to hit enter. And then we our mirror for us is the United States. Pick the closest one. And Debian.org and no proxy. And then we're going to click no and hit continue. And so here all we want are a couple things. We do not want the Debian desktop. So we're going to uncheck that. And we are going to check SSH server. And then we're going to hit continue. And then hit yes. And then pick your disk. And then uh, once your installation is complete, uh, pull out your USB drive and then hit continue. And that takes us to the login page. And so we'll log in as root. And the password that we put in uh, during our installation, hit enter. 
Okay, so now we are going to go back to our desktop. And what we're going to do is type in this into our server. So let's do that right now. So that was app get install wget and sudo and then hit enter and then yes y for yes and then enter and then that will install wget so next we'll switch back over to our computer and we're going to go log into our router and find our ip address of our server and then we're going to open putty and then put in the ip address of our server in hit enter or open log in as root and then your password and so next what we're going to do is go over to the install script page okay once that's done same idea we're going to copy the wget and then paste that into putty and then hit enter and then this will take quite a while to install and then when it's all done it will look like this and then you can close that window and then what we're going to do is go back to our router and then we're going to copy that so we're going to copy that and then paste that in and then hit enter and now we're into open me vault so the username is admin and the password is open media vaults and then click login and now we'll just go about doing some general settings to get you all set up for success. So first we're going to go to general. We're going to change auto logout to one day because otherwise it will log out every five minutes and you'll be confused. And then hit click save. And then apply and yes. Next we're going to click on admin administrator and then we're going to type in a new password for our admin account and then click save next we're going to go to date and time and just make sure our date and time are correct we're going to go to network go to interfaces make sure our interface is showing up there and it is if not you can add it here we're going to click edit and if you need to change from dh h dhcp to static this would be where you would do that and then we're going to go down to DNS servers and we're going to add a DNS server. Uh, this will prevent problems in the future if things change. Then click save. Apply and yes. Next is notifications where you would add in your email information to get notifications from the server. Power management is to change a few things. So first is what the power button does and we're going to say shut down and then we're going to click save then apply and yes and so schedule jobs is where you can add in specific times to have your computer standby shut down or reboot we're not going to do that right now monitoring is enable uh, system performance statistics to be collected Certificates is where you would put your SSH or SSL certificates. Schedule jobs is where you would put your Chrome jobs and it's very similar to the notification panel. So basically you would pick what time or date that you wanted and you would log in and then you would place the command right here. Update manager, what you would do is click check and that will check for updates. If it, you have any updates, you can just click on this and then click upgrade and that will do it. Plugins is where the different plugins are. And so two things. So one is Open Media Vault Extras is already installed if you do it this way and also the Flash Memory plugin. And for me, there is only one extra plugin that I usually use and that's Reset Perms. And so how you would Activate a plugin as you click on the box, get a check mark, and then click install. And yes, once that's done installing, click close, and then it will refresh the page. Now we can click on disk. So we're going to go back to OMB Extras later. We're going to click on disk. 
for physical monitoring of the disk, what you would do is highlight it and then click Edit. And then for power management and acoustic management and spin down time, you can do different things there, enable and write catch to minimize the power usage and the sound from your server. Then click Save and then apply and yes. So next we're going to go to File System and we're going to click on our second disk there. And for some reason, uh, even though the disk is there, we have to unmount it. And then uh, remount it again for Open Media Vault to recognize it. And then click Apply and Yes. And so then once we've done that, we can look at the Flash Memory plugin. This is already installed, so we don't have to do anything. Yeah, you don't have to do these notes, but if you decide to do that, just be aware that you can make your system read only, so be very careful. Next we go to User under Access Memory or Access Rights, and you can see our user is already there. Now we're going to go to Shared Folders. We're going to add a folder. So the first one's going to be App Data. And we can select our hard drive, and we're going to make this as easy as possible. Put everyone read write, and then click save, and then apply, and yes. Then we're going to add a downloads folder. Same disk, also everyone read write, and then click save, and then apply, and yes. Finally, we're going to add one more folder, Media. And then we're going to click our disk and everyone read write. And then click Save and Apply and Yes. And if you look at this section here, it says it's not referenced. And so basically what that means is it's not shared outside of our server. So we're going to go down to services and SMB and we're going to click on that and so first we're going to go to shares and we're going to add all our shares so we click the down arrow there's our app data and we want this to be have guests allowed and enable permission inheritance and then click save apply and yes next we're going to add in our downloads folder same thing we're going to say guests allowed and enable permission inheritance and click save then apply and yes and then finally we're going to add in our media folder again guests allowed and enable permission inheritance and click save apply and yes so now we've added our shares to Samba, but now we have to actually start Samba. And so when we start Samba, then our shares will be able or be readable on our network. So first thing we want to make sure of is that our group is the same as on our network. So basically Windows machines, they use work group and that's already enabled. The only other thing we have to do is click enable here and then click save. Then apply and yes. So now if we go to File Explorer and we're on our network tab, we can see there is our Debian machine. And there are different folders. Now we have read write access to our folders. So next we're going to go to the OMB Extras tab. And we're going to do a couple things here. To add the Extras repo, we can click on the extras repo there green part and then click save and then I like to update at the same time once that's done click close and now we're going to install docker and so you, here you can see this is where docker is going to be installed we need to press this button and then it, when we're done it will show the install status there so we're going to hit install once that's done, click close. And so that has installed the command line Docker. Now we have two choices here. So we have Portainer. So Portainer and Cockpits are GUIs or graphical 
interfaces to Docker. And so Portainer is strictly for Docker and has more options. Cockpit does Docker, but it also does virtual machines and can do other things with your system. Uh, for most people, what they'll need is just Portainer. You can install both, but you have to actually stop one or the other and able to use, uh, at least what I've seen, to use uh, Docker on either one. So you have to have only one running to use Docker on it. And so for this tutorial, we're just going to install Portainer, which is what most people will need. So we're going to click on Install Portainer. And this should go very quickly because we've already installed Docker. So Portainer itself is actually just a Docker that runs in Docker. Once that's done, click Close. And there you can see the, it's up for three seconds. And then we can click on Open Portainer to open the web interface. And to start off with, you need to make a password. Then click Create User. Next, you want to click on Local, and then click Connect. And now we're in the Portainer GUI, and then click on the Local tab there. And now we have our container management. If we go over to Containers, this is where we can add or remove containers for Portainer. And I have a separate video on that if you'd like to see that, how to do that. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe. If you want future updates on other videos about Open Media Vault and Portainer and other computer-related topics. And otherwise, you have a great day. Bye-bye.